we're going to go ahead and get started. On behalf of the Independence Chamber of Commerce in the City of Independence, welcome to First Friday. Before we get started, we always like to thank our business sponsor, and our business sponsor this morning is Hometown Healthcare. They have sponsored our breakfast, so they took care of all the warm muffins, fresh fruit, and hot coffee for you this morning. So this time, please welcome Hometown Healthcare's Director of Operation, John Reed. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for the Chamber and the City to allow us to uh, sponsor this morning. Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about Hometown Healthcare and how we got here in Independence. We have three parts of our uh, company here. Uh, we have our homemaker services, uh, which we call home care, um, and it is where we can send some people out. We cover all the home and community-based services through Medicaid. Uh, the, through the Area Agency on Aging, we do the Senior Care Act and Older Americans. We owe all of our VA services. Uh, we love to serve our veterans, um, as well as our private pay. Um, a lot of other what we do and what we focused on is our home health side, hometown home health, uh, which we try to keep everybody healthy and happy and safe in their homes for as long as possible. We can provide all services in the home. We have nurses. We have aides. All therapies that we can put in the home, physical therapy, occupational speech. We also have a dietitian on contract as well as a respiratory therapist. Um, and then the newest part of our program is our hospice program. And uh, we have an amazing team uh, on our hospice side. They um, uh, work well. We have not only the nurses and the aides, uh, a social worker and a chaplain. Um, and they do a very good job um, out in, in fact, I say an amazing job out in the, to the uh, homes. Uh, hometown was actually started, just a hop, skip, and a jump up here in little old Fredonia, Kansas, um, by Debbie Schinkel. Uh, Debbie is the owner and administrator. She's also an RN, and by being a nurse, when she started this company, it was all about the patient, and that patient-first philosophy has carried through to the company to where we are today. Uh, currently, uh, we have six offices. Uh, we never expected to grow out of Fredonia, but we have. Uh, everywhere we've been, we've been asked to come there. Um, to bring those services to the communities. We become a part of the communities. Um, and uh, so keeping that patient uh, as our priority is how we continue to grow. Uh, when we came here to Independence, we were watching, like everybody else was, what was happening with the hospitals. Um, when we got a call in late September, they said that they would be closing their home health and their hospice programs here in Independence and wanted to know if we could help. Uh, we had meetings the rest of that day. It was in late September. Um, we ended up within two and a half weeks. Uh, we acquired uh, the licenses and purchased all the uh, assets from Mercy, um, rented off a space, hired staff. We hired all the staff that was part of those programs that turned in an application. We hired staff from the clinic and staff from the hospital to keep as much medical talent here in the city as possible. Um, so we were able to get that done in two and a half weeks. October 11th, we took over um, the home health and hospice without any disruption to patient care. Um, we had, as the dust kind of settled and, and everything had, had kind of calmed down and the city ended up uh, being able to take over where the hospital is, um, we had been renting from Mercy. What we did is the city was very good to us and we were able to purchase one of the buildings uh, 921 West Myrtle is where our office is now. We'll be Caddy Corner Southwest um, when the city building is in, over there. Feel free to come and see us. Um, and uh, so we are here. Um, we are bringing our services to the community. And again, we're all about the patients. Um, the uh, I don't want to take up too much time this morning. Um, the uh, medical director that we have right now. Uh, Dr. Mears. Uh, we are also working with Dr. Carver, uh, and we appreciate their help um, and with the hospice program and, and keeping that going. Um, so we just want everybody to, to take a few minutes. If you want, we'll be here. Uh, Cammie, one of our uh, 
company representatives is here, um, and uh, you know we're going to stick around afterwards to speak with folks. So we appreciate this. I want to say thank you to a couple th people and, and entities. St. John's has been a great partner um, working with us. One of our biggest partners where we contract all of our therapy th from, Wilson Medical. Um, we appreciate them. They have a great staff up there. And um, the um, family clinic, uh, Wilson, uh, Wilson County here, Jonathan Rodriguez has been a big help to us as well. And we want to say thank you to them. But most of all, those of you, if anybody, your friends, family, neighbors, or loved ones have used hometown, we appreciate you and most of all the patients for allowing us to come into your homes and take care of you. So we thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. And we, uh, we appreciate you being a part of the business community. We look forward to doing a ribbon cutting for you as new chamber members in the near future. So. Um, as I was saying earlier, First Friday is co-sponsored by the City of Independence and the Chamber of Commerce, and it's a way for us to come together every month and just share information. And as I always talk about on the back of your um, program, because on the front it, it's a, a listing of all the great speakers, but on the back is a very detailed uh, calendar listing of everything that's happening in the community June and July. And uh, before I talk about those things, though, I think that... We have to give credit where credit's due. And Joanne Smith did this amazing newsletter from the City of Independence that you all have probably received in the mail. Um, thank you to the City of Independence for allowing her to do this, um, employing her to do this. And thank you, Joanne, for the hours of work I know that had to go into collecting all of this information and your amazing writing skills. So um, be sure if you did not get one of these in the mail, if you're from outside the area, there are um, some additional copies on the table and you're welcome to take one with you when you leave, as well as there are a lot of other additional flyers on the flyer table. Um, if you're not getting our chamber flyers, uh, you can pick one up on the flyer table or you can get them off of our Facebook page, Get Independence. I also want to say that we have um, one of our speakers is going to be speaking about Astra, and there is a detailed listing of all the Astra events over there as well. And uh, last month we had um, a lady from Kansas Action for Children, and she gave some statistics about the state of Kansas, but she also talked about that she would bring to us the statistics for Montgomery County, and she did that. And so I printed some of those copies off, and so if you're interested in um, some statistics about our Kansas kids, they're on the flash table as well. So let's talk about a few things that are going on in the community. I want to say that um, tonight and tomorrow and Sunday will be the kickoff for the Independence Children's Summer Theater. The first performance will be Rumpelstiltskin and then Aladdin and then, mm, I just lost my train of thought. Anybody? Susical, thank you very much. Um, and tonight, and it'll be Friday night and Saturday night. All performances are at 7 o'clock on those evenings. And then Sunday, there's a matinee at 2 o'clock. And what's really cool about this is, this is they are in their 12th year of the um, summer performances, and they have over 160 kids in that program. And there was so much... Um, popularity and enthusiasm behind summer theater that not only are they doing two musicals but they added a third play this year so shout out and kudos to the independence children's summer theater for all the great things they're doing in our community um, tomorrow or no tonight at six o'clock until midnight relay for life will be kicking off you might hear about that a little bit later um, tomorrow morning at 7 30 will be the kickoff day for farmers market and then right after that, you can load up your trunk with all of your recyclables and head out to the Recycling Center at 21st of Maple from 8 to noon. All of that is before noon tomorrow morning. Independence is such a boring place to live. No, I'm kidding. Okay, so Tuesday will be um, the second of a summer series of uh, Mid-Continent Band. I went last weekend. It was awesome. It always is awesome. I want to tell you that we're going to have a couple of kids' nights. So if you have kids and grandkids, um, June the 21st and July the 26th will be the kids' night out in the park. Performances start at 8 o'clock. Main Street will be having their muffins with Main Street on June the 8th. And Prairie Days, you know, uh, Little House on the Prairie has been open, but their Prairie Days celebration will be uh, June the 11th, which is always the second Saturday in June. 
chats with the chief. I saw the chief. Jerry's in the room. So Chief Harrison has already had one chats with the chief event um, at Annie Mays for the early risers, for the people who would like to come after work. He is um, going to have uh, an ev- uh, a chats with the chief scheduled for June the 15th at Uncle Jack's at 530. All Wheels Night will be June the 17th. The Verdigree Valley Art Exhibit will start later in June the 24th and run through uh, July. And then Downtown Movie Night was a huge success last weekend, and we will be having five of those. So we have four more left. They're on the last Saturday of every month through September, and the next one will be Minions. Pre-show activities will be at 8 o'clock, and the uh, movie will start at 9 o'clock. You will be hearing more about Astra, and that's going to be uh, starting before we know it. So let me say that if I missed any important dates on the calendar, we will be flashing that out and posting it this afternoon. So let me know if you see any errors or any changes or additions to that. Also know that we do a community calendar on the radio. So if you have some events you want me to publicize, feed me that information and I will do so. And um, comment cards are on the tables. Please uh, fill those out. Write down little ideas that you have for speakers. We always have great speakers. And we'll pick those up at the end. Um, Looks like there's still plenty of fruit and muffins, coffee. This is a relaxed event. um, So please uh, uh, hop up if you need extra coffee during the the event. But um, at this time, we're going to start with our speakers. And they will each speak, and if there's time left in there, a lot of time, we'll answer questions. If there is not enough time and we have to move on to the next speaker, we'll ask those questions at the end. And so you're free to um, ask questions about to the speakers as well as at the tail end, we'll do one-minute announcements, and you can share things that you want everyone to know that's going on in the community. So. Well, let's get started. Our first speaker is Chris Hammerschmidt. He is the Elk City State Park Manager. Please welcome Chris, who's going to tell us all about the 50th anniversary out at the park and all the events that are scheduled for later in August. Please welcome Chris. Uh, good morning. I want to thank the Chamber and the City of Independence for allowing me to come to talk about our um, the State Park and the construction part of it and, the, and our 50-year anniversary. That's August the 6th. Um, they, they gave me 10 minutes to talk. I don't know if I can talk 10 minutes on our 50-year celebration, so um, I'm going to throw in some slides um, of the construction part that was provided by Barry and Barberskin, so I thank them um, for allowing us to have a copy of that. Uh, the, the uh, lake was uh, funded by the federal government in 1941, and construction started um, in 1940, 1962 and was completed in 1966. The Kansas Park authorities took over in 1963. Um, okay, now I forgot how to run this. Oh, look at that. <laughs> With... <laughs> um, with the completion of, of, the, of the dam, um, it created Elk City Reservoir. It's 4,500 acre feet of surface water. Um, there's two state parks. One is now abandoned, which is roughly about 900 acres. And there's something else. I forgot what I was going to say. Well, anyhow, um, there's three main rivers that contribute into the, the reservoir, which is Elk River, Card, uh, Card Creek, Chautauqua uh, Creek, and Kasner Creek, um, which play a major role into the, the construction or the filling of the lake. Um, the dam itself is roughly 4,800 feet long and roughly 107 feet high. Um, this is the outlet channel, or this is the inlet part of the, at the bottom, and it's going north, which is the outlet channel. Um, this is the gate tower, and it's, it, 
you're facing south, so you're facing out into the lake and, or into the reservoir. This is the inlet side. Uh, it's quite massive. You, when you look at it from the from the dam itself, as you drive over, you can't can't put that in perspective. All that's underwater, basically, to where the two wing walls meet into the concrete tower. That's basically underwater from there. The outlet channel. Um, there's. Two gates in there. They're seven feet by sixteen feet. Um, that's what controls that the water outflow. It has the capability of of, of releasing anywhere from nine thousand to ten thousand cubic feet of water a second. A second. That's a lot of water. Um, the dam was built for basically flood control, water quality, and then recreation at the very end of it. Um, they. They built the dam for flood control, and they, you can't have any natural man-made structures inside what they call the 100-year flood. And they say that it's only supposed to flood once every 100 years. Well, we know that's not true. <laughs> um, since, since the lake was constructed, um, I believe it's gone over the uncontrolled spillway at least four times. And those that were around in 07... Um, got to witness that, and me for the first time. Um, the unique part about this picture is, is that if you still go down there today, there's two rocks which are right there and right there. And if you go out there today, those are still there. Um, I, too big to move. Maybe it helped to slow down the water as, it, as it's being released. Um, but quite impressive that they're still there. It's a finished product. Actually, you can see the water is now flowing through the structure. The uncontrolled spillway, it's 400 feet long and roughly uh, 40 feet high. And once it reaches this point, there's no stopping it. it, it naturally flows over. And in 05, 07, during the major flood, it was four feet, a little over four feet uh, uh, over that, going over. This is kind of a unique picture. It's, now we got in, I'm getting into some older pictures. The, the white rock, basically the, the park entrance is about right there. And then the uncontrolled spillway is right there. And this is what we call the rim dike. Um, basically used, it's a smaller version of the dam. It's used to help keep the water from going into independence. And for those that don't know where you're at, this is Langs Dairy Road, which is County Road 3325. Just a brochure of the dedication of the lake back in... Um, 1966. Now a few from the past. This is our boat ramp area. Looks nothing like it does now for those that were out there this weekend for Memorial Day. Still a three-lane boat ramp. There's some giggling. Somebody probably been there since. <laughs> probably grew up on the lake. This is uh, this is back in October. They were still celebrating the Neil Walla campout back then, and this I believe in 70, 74. And we still have that pumpkin, by the way. <laughs> um. Back then, they were allowed to camp and move about wherever they wanted to go. Not so much today. 1985. It's an old picture of the campground. I think that's Sunset Point now. That picture was taken from Timber Road, which is known now as Timber Road. That's probably where Tim and Cindy camped this weekend. <laughs> this is our office. 
back then? Nothing's changed. Except for color. <laughs> Things have changed for our campsites. They're all hardened surface, asphalt. Um, a lot of them have uh, the concrete living pad where the picnic table is located and a fire ring. And some of them have a lantern pole for, for, to provide light. Um, they all have site poles, which is the 6 by 6 treated post. And this site here, almost all of my sites are, are uh, 50 amp service. Um, they have 50 amp with 30 amp and then and water. I have 96 utility campsites and about 50 to 60 primitive campsites. And out of those 96 utility campsites, I have 13 with sewer. This is the boat ramp today. Looks nothing like what you saw in the previous picture. Uh, courtesy dock. And then up there in the top picture, we have an ADA fishing dock. Another courtesy dock used for overflow, basically. And our playground. We have this one is a pour in place rubber. It meets all the safety standards that are by the state. Um, you get out there, it's like it's really squishy. It's they can withstall well, uh, the kids can withstand a, about a six foot fall and not get hurt. I've seen one land on their head and get up and run off. <laughs> a lot tougher than me. I would have laid there in the ache and pain for a while. <laughs> Um, Elk City is pretty well known for its trail system. Um, we have the 15-mile trail, which is the Elk River Trail. It's 15 miles one way. Um, it follows from the west side of the dam and goes clear over to the town of, almost to the town of Elk City. Um, that's well known. It's uh, nationally known. And our other trail, which is the Table Mound Trail, it's two and three quarters one way. It starts in the state park, goes over to the Overlook, and then two and three quarters mile back. I don't know how many times that we've had, hey, do you, can you get a ride? Mm -hmm. Not a taxi service, but we'll do our best. Um, <coughs> August 6th is our big day. And we're going, going to, uh, it's a free day. We're going to correlate that with our OK Kids event. Um, it's free. Um, we're just having another small dedication for um, the 50-year anniversary of, of Elk City Reservoir. Um, in the morning hours, we'll have a meet and greet, and then some of the Corps of Engineer people will come and talk about probably some of the things, same things I talked about. And then in the afternoon, we're doing kids' events, um, canoes, kayaks, um, water balloon launching, you know, things like that. Um, I hope to see you all there. If you guys have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Best of my ability. Thank you. I guess that's no questions. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> all right. So it's always I love to have. Um, all the speakers at First Friday. It's always interesting to hear about all the things that um, we have in our community that sometimes we're unaware of or that we take for granted. It's just a good reminder of all the community treasures that we have. So we're thrilled about the park and and um, and your big 50-year celebration. So look forward to August the 6th. All right. Our next speaker is actually an unfamiliar face to town. Um, he is the Community Relations Advisor for Enbridge Pipeline. Please welcome Brent Rush. Thank you, Lisa. Um, appreciate the opportunity to be here sitting in the chamber. Um, I'm new with Enbridge, started in the uh, fall of last year, and a little truth in advertising, this is my first presentation, so um, kind of you're my, you're my guinea pigs. Uh, moved out to Oklahoma from California, um, worked for, gosh, 12 years for Buck Owens at his radio station as a news reporter, so if things go really bad, I'll start doing Buck Owens karaoke and slowly exit out the <laughs> side door. So um, being a large corporation, and I hope smaller businesses, everyone does this too, we'd like to start off with the safety 
uh, moment. Um, I'm moving into a new home, um, and I want to just remind everybody, you know, sometimes at work we really get focused on safety. Be sure to take that, that message home as well. Um, one thing I've noticed in moving, um, especially as you get up in age a little bit, uh, you can't do the things you maybe did 20 years ago. Um, and I've got a few boxes I was lifting that reminded me of that painfully yesterday, as a matter of fact. So um, just we like to remind people, be safe um, and, and share safety messages uh, wherever you are with your coworkers, uh, family, and everyone just to, to keep everybody safe. Uh, the lawyers got a hold of this presentation, so anything I say, please don't use to buy stocks or that sort of thing. And besides, what I'm going to say, I'm sure will not help you in that, in that regard. So a little bit about Enbridge. So, you know, a lot of you know us from our uh, Flanagan South project as it came through a lot of construction activity, a lot of work, went into service in December of 2014. Um, and then what happens typically, that's our major project side, we tend to disappear. Um, be, what happens, though, is the project gets turns over, turned over to our, our operations side, which is based in Cushing. And so uh, the, just the amount of activity decreases significantly. But we're still here, and that's why I want you to know that. If you have any issues or concerns with uh, Enbridge, I'm going to have my business cards up here. Um, feel free to reach out to me. But this is our overall system map. You can see the large blue line coming out of Canada down through the United States. Um, is our, what we call our main line, and where we are is part of the mid-continent region, which um, covers portions of Illinois, all of Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma. And my territory that I cover is Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. So it's a lot of a lot of territory to cover. So I try to get here as often as I can, and want to stay engaged with uh, with all of you. So this is um, just talking about some of our renewable assets as well. So Enbridge, a lot of folks think of us as the oil pipeline company, but we have been purchasing and expanding into wind energy, solar, um, and uh, geothermal as well. So, and a lot of this information is on our website. I'm sure all of you know, you know, petroleum products are used in just about everything, um, uh, not just for fuel for gasoline. So just like to remind everyone what, how important it is to our economy and what we do. And um, I'll talk a little bit more about our Cushing hub. And there are a total of uh, 14 uh, operators there at that Cushing terminal. And it's such an important place to, for the transactions of oil. That's where they actually set the uh, market price on the New York Mercantile Exchange is in Cushing because you can trade the oil so easily at that location. Because people often ask, why Cushing, Oklahoma? So um, because we have uh, our Spearhead pipeline and our Flanagan South pipeline coming through Kansas, we just want to remind folks that we do take safety very seriously. We engage our emergency responders. We want all of you, if you're in proximity, if you smell, see anything unusual, don't hesitate to call 911 if you think it's an emergency um, and, and, and let us know. Uh, some of the things we do, uh, uh, you may see helicopters or fixed-wing aircraft flying over pipelines frequently. That's a requirement. Uh, we have to do that every two weeks. We actually do it every week mainly because the weather is so unpredictable. You don't want to schedule it and be out of compliance because of weather. Of weather. Um, we do pressure monitoring. Up in the upper right, um, pigs. I, I still am trying to get used to calling them pigs, but it's a pipeline inspection <laughs> gadget, they call it. Um, they've got different varieties, but these things are pretty high tech. I watched one get launched um, from Cushing going to um, uh, Illinois, Wood River. And that thing is loaded up with so many computer chips now, it can detect any sort of um, cracking, it can detect any sort of defect in the line. And so what happens is we launch these pigs with, uh, uh, frequently, and then they could lead to what we call an integrity dig, where you might see some activity come out where we have to come in and need to replace or do some work on a section of pipeline. Um, that uh, bar chart, I'll skip over it really quickly, that just shows the number of integrity digs that we've done historically. Um, and you can see it grows. Um, we try and do more and more uh, to really keep on top of the lines. Um, another interesting fact, people ask why pipelines. Uh, it's, actually the very, it's the safest alternative out there. Um, the other alternatives are truck and rail. And frankly, a pipeline moves a lot of product and has the least number of incidents compared to the other two by far. So our region, this is the map, and shows you everything where we cover all the, um, you see our pump stations are outlined there in bold. Uh, we have our southern access extension going through Illinois. That was just completed and put into service last fall. Our Ozark pipeline um, runs from Cushing up to Wood River up to refineries near St. Louis. That is, uh, went into service actually in 1951. 
And then we have our Flanagan South line and our Spearhead line, which uh, pass through this area as well. And the Flanagan South has a, a significant capacity. So the Cushing Storage Hub, uh, just want to briefly talk. If you ever go to Google, Google Maps, it's kind of interesting because it's fascinating. We have 88 storage tanks there just in Bridge, and there are, again, 14 companies that are located there. So that's where they do set the price, and that's why it's such an important part of the uh, infrastructure for moving oil in North America. Those are some of the other companies that are out there. We used to be the top uh, number one in capacity at Cushing. Matrix just, um, or I'm sorry, uh, Magellan just, or sorry, Plains, Plains just passed us up. Plains Magellan have been building quite a bit there. But you can see two, two million barrels, two to three million barrels move through that facility every day, just based on trading largely. So Kansas, I, we just got some numbers for last year. These are all last year's total. So the salary, 229000 I think we have three to four employees in Kansas, um, right-of-way technicians uh, monitoring the property. And then the biggest benefit to Kansas, obviously, is in property taxes. And then we do a lot of capital and operating expenditures in the state as well. And if any of you are interested in doing business with Enbridge, come see me afterwards, and I can share you. It's a bit of a process, if any of you have worked with in the corporate world, getting that information or getting into the system, but I'm happy to work with you on that. So these are the uh, lines here through Kansas. Shows the diameter of the lines, the distance, and the capacity on those lines. Uh, lastly, just want to remind you, 811, call before you dig. I get in trouble if I don't mention that. And frankly, that's our biggest concern out there is somebody striking one of our lines. But not just for us, it's for anybody, natural gas lines, anything. You just don't want to be digging if you don't know what's uh, under the ground. So be sure and call if you're, if you're doing any excavating work. Uh, this was a picture I took recently up in Allen County. We are working with uh, the Allen County Community Foundation with emergency responders on grant programs, our safe community grant. We provide up to $1,250 a year to all of the emergency responders to help them buy equipment and things that they might need so that that gets them in good shape or helps them in a response. But the foundation is actually helping them with the grant writing process. So if you know of any emergency responders, they want help with the grants, have them get a hold of the foundation. They're happy to help out. And that's actually in Tulsa. So we do community investment grants as well. So we have not done one in this area. If you know of a community need, again, come see me afterwards, and I can give you the link. And don't, don't rush me too much. Uh, <laughs> but a limited amount of funds. But we, will, we can work with you if there's a, a, good, a good community project here. And we renew those funds every year. And I think that's all I've got, so thank you. thank you. Any questions or anything? Or afterwards we can do that, I suppose. Any questions? Oh, here's one over there. So were we affected by the earthquakes in Oklahoma? Uh, we get that question a lot, actually. Uh, so no, we weren't. The earthquakes are not significant enough. I say significant, high enough magnitude to affect any of our facilities down there. The question we often get as well, you know, how big of an earthquake. Matrix uh, is a company that designs all of our tanks, and we actually work closely with them, and they're confident that our facilities are, are fine, unless, you know, unless we get some, you know, San Andreas fault level something that occurs, but that would affect a lot of folks. Sure. What's your western terminal in Canada as regards to the Murray fires up there? In Canada. The Western Terminal and the Fort McMurray fires. Yeah, so th that uh, did disrupt some of our operations up there. I don't have the specifics on it, but a lot of our employees were displaced from the fires up in Canada, so we've been trying just to get everything back to normal operation. But it, you, you're right, it has been a disruption, and we're working with the community and everyone trying to get everybody back on their feet. That was not pleasant for the folks up there. Yeah. Planning any more pipelines in the future? We nothing in the near future that I'm aware of. So, um, one thing I've noticed about this business that can change quickly is <laughs> the market conditions. So we respond very, you know, to to the market dynamics. So, you know, as you could imagine, especially in Oklahoma, that's been really tough with the with the oil price. Uh, the pipeline companies tend to be a little more insulated due to the um, it's kind of like a utility in a sense, moving the product. But the uh, oil companies themselves, it's tough, and those are. Large, largely our customers. So, if something were to happen, we'll I'll be back up here with uh, raising the flag, letting everybody know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much.
Well, thank you for traveling to Independence. We appreciate your time, and we definitely appreciate the economic impact that the pipeline project had on our community and surrounding communities a few years ago. So thank you for that. All right, our next speaker is appropriately dressed for First Friday. She didn't know that because she appropriately dressed for the upcoming Astra Festival. So please help me welcome Leah Shepard. Oh, that's a little better. Yes, as you can tell, I'm ready for the 4th of July. I'm really glad to see that all of this hoopla is going on for the 4th because, yes, the Astra Arts Festival is coming up June 30th through July 4th, and I'm really excited for it. Um, maybe I won't say that it's because I'm ready to get it over with. I'm just ready to get started. We have so many activities for everyone, and I'm excited to be able to tell you about that. You know, several people have told me that they're leaving town for that weekend. Well, I hate that because uh, we have lots of people coming into town, I have to tell you. That weekend is the Indy Homecoming Celebration Weekend that happens every three years, and it's the Astra Arts Festival. And as of right now, I, I, I'm going to say that these statistics are maybe a week old. In ticket sales for the Astra Arts Festival right now, I want to make sure that I get this right, um, and we've sold even more since we did these stats, 80% of our ticket sales are out of town ticket sales, 40% are out of state, and of that remaining 40%, most of those are at least 90 miles away, okay? So, when the Astro Arts Festival was begun, actually it was a brainchild uh, of the William Inge Arts Center about four years ago, and our first actual festival was two years ago, 2014, and we only do this every two years. Now, in 2014, uh, we did a 10-day festival, and we, did, we made a 15-member board. We did lots and lots and lots of work, had lots of volunteers, and it actually was a pretty good success. And at that time, we decided, you know, let's try it again. So 2016, we're ready again. We have, again, 15 board members. Can I have the board members and some committee people? Could, I know you're here. Could you raise your hands, those, those people who have been working on the Astro Arts Festival, please? We have board members. OK. Thank you, and thank you for all your help with this. Thank you, too, to our sponsors, because we have now moved out from the umbrella of the Inge Arts Center. We still partner with them. But we've gone out on our own now, and we are our, are our own 501c3, so I want to point that out. And we are having a good time getting ready for this. We're, we still have our same goal. Our goal is to try to bring tourism to southeast Kansas through the fine arts. Now, the four areas that we really deal with, visual arts, music, literature, and theater. So, hopefully, we're going to be giving you quite an array of things, but we've cut it down to five days. We were exhausted after ten days. But five days, we're planning in those five days, though, to really compress it all, and it's going to, be, it's going to have quite a festival attitude. So, we're excited about that. Now, some things to go, that I probably need to go over, the highlights. Uh, first of all, we have music. We have committee chairs that are in charge of this, and I need to say this is, it's a lot like Niwala. We're all volunteers, all of us. Ray Rothgeb and Don Farthing are in charge of the music organization this year, and they have a great committee that's put together quite a lineup for you, I think. Just some highlights I want to hit. Tonic Solfa, June 30th, is going to kick off the festival that night upstairs, and they are an a cappella group, awesome group. You should give them a listen online. They're great. Friday night, we have Ernie Haas and the Signature Sound back in town. Ernie Haas was a gospel group. They were here last time that we had the festival. They were so popular and have a great following, and they'll be back upstairs again Friday night. Saturday, 
Well, one thing I might mention, on Friday we also have um, a friend to Independence, Jana Jay, is coming to do workshops, actually fiddling workshops, if you will check out at the high school. And she's going to, if, if you are interested in that and want to register, um, she's going to be working with students through adults. So you might want to check on that and see what she has to offer. And then she's going to be giving a concert on Saturday at 6 o'clock. Saturday is jam-packed. Because after that concert at 6 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, out at ICC at the Inge Theater, we have Diva Dish. Now, not music, but uh, I'm gonna, I, I want to put that in right now because that's theater, okay? And you know, that's kind of my thing. So I want to be sure that I put that in, too. But... Uh, later that night, in here, 9 to 12, we have Big Shed and the Mystic Funk Machine. He's here for the dance uh, to partner with the Indie Homecoming Group, and I think that he's going to rock the house. If you haven't heard, Michael Mothershed, a native of Independence, I will tell you right now, his group is awesome, and uh, you'll be able to hear them here. Then uh, more music. We have the Bells of Praise Bell Choir on Sunday and also the Reuter Pipe Organ Concert at the Presbyterian Church. And then Monday, the Mid-Continent Band plays for the firework display. So all that is just music, all right? Theater, I mentioned to you the Diva Dish activity. It's Luke Yankee. He grew up. Uh, well, you could go online and check that out. I don't want to get into this too much. Luke Yankee's been here many times for the Inge Festival. Great friend of Independence as well. He does a multimedia presentation um, and, and acting, talking about his mother, who was Eileen Heckert. She was in several of Inge's productions, and she was in so many things. And with that, he... Dishes on the divas, all the actors and actresses that, you know, that he grew up with. And it's, it's a great presentation. In addition to that, we're going to be having storytellers and uh, some magicians from, um, involved in that in, in some of our activities downtown, too. Literature. Lori Martin and Heather Midosh are in charge of literature. And I have to tell you, it's amazing the things that they have lined up. We do have an evening presentation, and the evening presentation is Sunday night out at ICC at the William Inch Theater, and that is um, David Lee, a poet laureate, and we have an evening with the poet, and it promises to be terrific. And then we have tons of free workshops that uh, we brought in authors, self-publishing workshops. Jim Fisher and Rob Morgan have a haiku uh, presentation that they have. We have so many things going on with that. And I want to mention visual arts right now, too, because one of the activities that they have, they worked on together. Visual arts was headed by Leanne Stewart. And with that, they have what's called a lit and art crawl. Now, the, um, the literature group also has a wine tasting activity. Area wineries are coming into the Booth Theater Friday afternoon. And then after that will be the Lit and Art Crawl. We're all going to stay downtown, and we will move actually from one business to another. And in those businesses, you will hear authors and poets present their work. We also have... I, I can't even begin to tell you how many things uh, Amy Bloomfield and Sue Landwehr have worked up for us downtown. We're going to have a trunk show. Area artists will have photography, uh, sculpting, everything for sale. Plus, we'll have lots of demonstrations going on on the street of different art activities. So all that's going on. One thing I really need to hit on is with all those people in town for the 4th of July, the kids... There's stuff to do for the kids, I promise. On Sunday, you need to hit the park. Because out in the park, we have kids discover art in the park. It's not the old art in the park. I'm sorry, that was great. This is the kids discover art in the park. We're going to be located in several buildings. And in those buildings, we uh, kids, I believe, ages 4 through 12, can engage in making uh, art projects. 
I believe there's two projects for each age group. And between one to four, you can head out to the park with the kids <clears throat> and make sure that they, uh, it's all free, get in and take part in that. There's also an art um, exhibit out there, <clears throat> excuse me, called the Monster Exhibit at the Shelter House. It's a, a juried art contest with students. So you need to check that out as well. There will also be um, every lunchtime, Thursday through Saturday, in our ticket headquarters, which will be at 212 North Penn. And our ticket headquarters open June 16th. All right, June 16th, coming up. Um, at our ticket headquarters from 11 to 2, Thursday through Saturday, we're going to be doing, uh, having kind of a uh, musical presentation plus some storytellers. And we have area people who will come in, bring your lunch in, have fun. Um, let's see. I don't want to go on too long. Oh, Verdigree Valley Art Contest, of course, is ongoing. We have a writing contest that's ongoing. Please check us out at www.astrafest.org. If you go to our Facebook page, Astra Arts Festival, Shelby Demo is doing a great job of keeping that up. And you can check on there for our phone number and all of our contact information. Please get hold of us. There, um, I've had many people question, are we going to have a mural this year? Yes, we are. And thank you to Community National Bank for allowing us to borrow their wall. To put that on. I, I guess we're not borrowing it. It's going to be there. Okay. And I think everybody is really going to like this mural. I really do. You know, it kind of has to go with uh, independence and 4th of July and patriotism and things like that. I think everyone will enjoy what we have. We have a professional artist, uh, muralist, Heidi Sallows, who's coming to town. And she will be doing all the painting on that. So um, come downtown, see what we have. I think um, for the most part, uh, we're trying to keep everything downtown and then on Sunday out at the park and Monday out at the park, we will have some things going on at the Presbyterian Church, the, li the public library, and like I said, many venues downtown. We have a volunteer meeting. June 15th at 6.30. We'll, you'll hear more about that. Look for other things that we're doing in the paper. If you have any questions, call that number, and we'll be happy to fill you in on what's happening. I do want to say for tickets, those tickets, you know, the out-of-town people are coming to town. I don't know. Uh, lots of motels, we're hoping, will be, uh, motel rooms will be rented, and lots of uh, businesses will be selling food. So that's, that's a good thing. That's a positive thing for independence. And we want to make sure that we continue our goal of trying to increase tourism in southeast Kansas through the fine arts. And for those of you who say you're not into the arts, please remember, you read books, you turn on the radio, you listen to music, you download books. You look at nice paintings and say, gosh, I'd like to have that for my wall. You like to take pictures. You look at nice photos. You love that. Let's face it. We're all into the arts in one way or another, and we will be forever. And this is just one way to help share those arts with everyone. Tons of things coming to town. Please come enjoy. I didn't say tickets, www.astrofest.org. Go to Donate and Tickets. There's a ticket package. All those evening events, six events for about $107. Great, great deal. And then there are individual tickets as well. So please go on, buy some tickets. You can buy at the door. Come to the volunteer meeting, get involved, and come enjoy Astra over the 4th of July. Questions? Okay, be sure to pick up a calendar over there. It has everything you need. Okay, oh, volunteer meeting will be at 212 North Penn, which is the old J.C. Penney's building. Okay, on the 15th at 630. Thank you, Leah. And thank you to the 15 board members for ASTRA and the numerous volunteers that, uh, that will make ASTRA 
festival, uh, another great success. I think that is, is awesome. We're excited to see the community swell on June the 30th through the 4th of July. All right. Our last speaker has been to the podium before. She is representing the Young Professionals of Independence as a young professional herself. Please welcome Jocelyn Kuziak from Kelly and Kuziak Law Firm, who will be talking to you all about the great things that are happening with the Independence Young Professionals. Jocelyn? Well, yes, my name is Jocelyn Kuziak. I am the president of the Young Professional of Independence Organization, and I was here about six months ago um, sharing my story about why I moved back to Independence and chose to make that decision to move back here. And I did talk about how we would be starting a Young Professionals of Independence Organization. And at that time, we had no idea what that organization would look like or be, and we are still certainly in the experimental stages, but we do have an organization in place. We do have a board consisting of 12 board members, and we currently have 77 members of that organization. We are six months in, and we are very excited. So I am here to share what we have been doing with the young professionals and where we plan to go. Um, just to give a little bit of background, um, our board of trustees members have been working very hard since September of 2015 to put this organization together. We launched the organization in January of 2016, and as I've already stated, we do have 77 members already. We started out by just doing one social event every month. And that event was made in order to get people together, get people connected, and get people talking. And you would be shocked to see what happens when you get so many individuals in a room together just simply socializing and what ideas come from that. So we continue with that, and we do have that. It is called Thursday Thursdays. It is the last Thursday of every month. And um, it it certainly is a great time for individuals to get together after work, put their hair down a little bit and relax and just have good conversations. So we intentionally started out doing simply social organizational kind of like activities. Then we started to go to coffee and conversation, which is the same concept, but it's in the morning. And it is the first Wednesday of every month. We started that in about March um, or April. And we have been continuing with that. That event is specifically um, to help create and foster deeper conversations. We intentionally want it to be a smaller group. It is held at a smaller location at Annie Mace, and it's typically about three to four people at each table talking for 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, we do have conversation starters, but so far we haven't had to need them. Um, so it's a great time to come out. We've also, um, now that we are growing our members and our membership and we're getting people excited and connected, we um, are kicking off this summer our summer speaker series. And this is actually an idea that was formed um, after some conversations that had occurred at one of our Thursday Thursday events. And what we're simply doing is we have three speakers, um, one each month in the summer, and it's over the lunch hour. And these speakers are talking about their experiences and what their life is like and sharing some sort of inspirational story. Um, it is very exciting, and I'm very much looking forward to it. it that is going to be a members-only event, and the sponsorships that were selected are going to be paying, so it will be uh, free of charge to members. And just to give a taste of some of the speakers, Corey Hugo, for instance, who is a young professional and is a young professional member, will be speaking um, about his experience of growing up um, under his parents' wings of a local business and then eventually taking over that business and growing it you know, all before the age of 40. I mean, that is a very inspirational story, and hopefully it'll inspire other young professionals in this community to do big and great things like Corey Higo is doing. Um, we also have had some professional development events. Um, we've had one specifically at the Fab Lab, which who here has been to the Fab Lab? Right? Okay, great amount of hands. It is absolutely amazing. Um, so we took our membership out there, and we got one-on-one -on -one tours of the facility. We got to play with Tinker Toys. I mean, it was a really good time. Um, and we do have two other professional development events in the works for fall as well as winter. 
So let me tell you a little bit about why the young professionals are doing what they're doing and the way we're doing it in sense of the board's direction. I think a lot of people in the community are wondering, well, you know, when are you going to start X and when are you going to start Y? Um, I know Mandy, who is our representative at the chamber, and myself as the president, we are constantly being flooded with individuals and other organizations in this community asking us to somehow get our membership involved in the other areas. And right now, our response, and it continues and will continue to be at this time, if you have something to present, please give us something in writing, and we will certainly find a way to get that out to the members. But we're currently not attaching to any specific other organization in town because we are a brand new organization, and we need to grow within ourselves before we can grow outside of this community and be an even bigger hit here. And so we do appreciate the community certainly reaching out to us, supporting us, um, and already counting on our responsibility and getting us involved. But I do want to approach that and let you know that is why we're doing what we're doing in the sense of let's grow our organization itself and our members. Let's get them connected. Let's get them excited. Let's grow some friendships within our organization so then we can be an even more powerful hit outside of this community and inside of this community. So with future events, another big thing that we do have coming up, and again, this is something with time and patience, is we are going to have an all-members meeting in the fall. And currently, um, the events that are being planned and that are taking place are all planned by the board members. Like I said, there's only 12 of us. Um, a lot of us are business owners. A lot of us are already on other boards, and so our time is very, very precious to us. And so we are certainly um, planning these events right now all ourselves with a lot of energy and a lot of gusto, and it, it's going very well. But at this all-member meeting in the fall, we hope to get members involved in our committees to help us actually plan these activities and direct the organization where the members wanted to go. Um, so with that, I would say to all of you, we certainly appreciate those in this room who do fit in the 20 to 40-ish age range that are our members. Um, and we look forward to you becoming a member if you're not. Um, additionally, I see a lot of faces in here that are uh, managers or business owners who have not only encouraged their young professionals in their organization to become members, but they have also paid for that membership for them. And that is something that I think just goes to this community support, um, not only of their own employees, but of this community. And we really certainly appreciate that. Additionally, just throwing out some shout outs and some thanks. Um, the Chamber of Independence has been absolutely amazing with helping support us. They, um, that's where our board meets, is at, at the Chamber of Commerce, and certainly offer resources such as Mandy, um, who helps us with all of our marketing, our organizations, getting our list together. It's very, very helpful. Additionally, all of our sponsors, um, we've had several businesses who have stepped up to the plate. Um, Hugo's Industrial Supply, Yerkes and Michelle's, Express Employment, Commercial Bank, and Community National Bank have already uh, supported our events. And in the future events that we have planned, we have Best Beverage, American Family, Cole Thornton Agency, Advanced Physical Therapy, and Midwest Real Estate. Um, those are all businesses in this area who have already supported us and sponsored us or are going to. And we certainly will appreciate any more sponsors that we can get at your tables. There is a sponsorship form if anybody is interested in sponsoring. Um, and again, thank you so much to the local businesses for um, asking not and encouraging your employees to become members and to get involved um, because we are the next generation that will be stepping up. We certainly look forward to stepping up into the leadership of this community and there's some big shoes to fill. Um, finally, our future events that we have planned, as always, Thursday, Thursdays are the last Thursday of the month. The next one will be on June 30th at Uncle Jack's. Um, we do have coffee and conversation July 6th, and that is at Annie Mae's. And we have the Caddyshack Golf Tournament, which is something that's going to be very exciting. It's on a Friday evening. Um, very fun game of golf. This is an event that's free to members due to the awesome sponsorships we've gotten. And if you aren't a member, please sign up, or you can pay the price to um, come and attend as well. And that is going to be on July 8th. So that's basically all I have for now. I would encourage everybody in this room who needs to become a member to become a member and to encourage your staff, your friends, your colleagues to also become members. So thank you very much. And if there's any questions, I'll certainly entertain them at this time.
Yes, sir. What do you define as a young profession? Chuck and I qualify. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> It is a uh, individual who is in the, between the ages of 20 and 21 and 40-ish, and you have to live, work, yes, <laughs> and you have to you have to live, work, or play within the city of Independence. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yes. And that is actually an initiative of our turn, which is not associated with the young professionals of independence. Um, and so that is a question more for our turn, and maybe that could be a speaker next month. <laughs> You're welcome. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Jocelyn. And, and on behalf of the chamber, we are very excited about having the young professionals, excuse me, as part of independence, because it is a huge recruiting tool for the community. When you're bringing in new families and um, working to get them engaged in the community, YP is uh, just one of the many ways that we can engage new people and also energize the existing 21 to 40-ish people in our community. And like Jocelyn said, they are the next generation of leaders, so we want to empower them and motivate them and support them. So let's see. Uh, we have, are actually at the end of our program, so um, I want to thank our business sponsor again for um, supporting us this morning. We appreciate the information you shared with us. So again, thank you to um, Hometown Healthcare. And you can join us on Friday, July the 1st. Our sponsor will be Labette Health Independence Clinic. I will also tell you that on the tables, because we have recycling tomorrow, we always have four volunteers out at every recycling event. You can volunteer for just one time from 8 to noon. There's a sheet on your table. If you just put your name and your email address, I will give you a call and try to plug you in in one of the upcoming events and um, we'll get your volunteer hours taken care of down there. Um, but we also want to open this up to, uh, an op to give you an opportunity to do some shout-outs about some things that are going on in the community. I saw Karen come in, so um, I know that she has something that she would like to share with us, so I'm going to uh, turn on the mic so that we can capture all of this for the television production, and we'll use the remaining time to... Uh, share things that are going on in the community. So again, I want to thank our business sponsor. I want to thank all of you for coming. Look forward to seeing you uh, on Friday, July the 1st. And um, at this time, everybody be thinking about what you want to share with us. Really, I'm start? Yeah. All right. Talk loud. I don't know if it's hot uh, yet. I, I don't probably even need it. Um, I just wanted to share with you and give a shout out to... Um, uh, Reggie Tapman Myers uh, is a is a legend in his own time, um, and he is he could be a young professional if he was a resident here. He now lives in Delaware. Uh, he's moved down to Delaware to help family out. But um, Reggie was here to choreograph Spelling Bee at the beginning of the school year, and then we did a spotlight on the artist with him, and he performed for free at, at ICC. And a lot of people in the community turned out to see that, especially some young people. And they said, please, 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 won't you bring him back and have him teach TAP? So uh, we, this really has been sponsored by a couple of families in the Dance Academy, especially the Tushmans and, and, the, and the Dance School. Uh, and ICC has helped out quite a bit, too, uh, with his airfare. So we've brought back Reggie Tapman Myers, and he's going to teach upstairs today from 10 to 2.30 for free Children from 7 to 100, we have no age limit here at Tap Into Indy. This was an event we were going to do for Love Independence, but because uh, we knew that a lot of the families would be going to Cessna's anniversary, we decided we should reschedule at a time when there were no summer camps, no other conflicts. So 10 to 2.30 today, free upstairs. You can learn how to tap and hip-hop with Reggie uh, for nothing. And we provide water and snacks, and we'll take a little half-hour lunch break. And you do not need tap shoes to learn how to tap. You can wear sneakers. And so I'm just going to give you a little taste. Would you, Reggie? Woohoo! Reggie Myers. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm going to give you a brief demonstration. 
I'm sure I'm going to tire you out. I'm going to tire myself out. So just enjoy your nice, brief demonstration. Bravo. Thank you. Awesome. Steve, I think you can go today and we'll have you perform at Rotary next Friday. How's that? I do have two announcements I'd like to share. Um, <laughs> we have um, the Independence Housing Authority under the guise of Gary Hogsett brought an idea to us um, in conjunction with Independence Cinemas with Aaron Schrader. And I have couple of my cohorts here. Um, I have Amber Nisley, Megan Lawrence with Medical Lodges. I'm happy to announce that we don't just celebrate the kids in our community. We celebrate our older children in the community, our seniors. And yes, Steve, Chuck, here we go. I got something for you. We are going to sponsor Independence Housing Authority with Penn Terrace Apartments are sponsoring the first Senior Mo Movies Day down at the theater. It'll be the second Tuesdays of the month, and you can come down for a free movie. Come with a little pocket change for popcorn and pop. But I'm happy to announce that the first one, we had a lot of the guys at Penn Terrace that said, you don't do anything for us. So we are going to sponsor McClintock. So, yes, those of you who are familiar with um, John Wayne, the Duke, come down on Tuesdays, this June 14th, and watch McClintock free, free movie. 10 o'clock in the morning. But we are going to check IDs. It's going to be 55. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely over to the 40-ish. <laughs> next year. I do have one more announcement. I don't want to take up everybody's time, but I am so excited. It's in your newsletter, but we have a gentleman in this community that I'm thrilled to make an announcement that we're going to be honoring. I invite the entire community to come down for a groundbreaking July 2nd, again at 10 o'clock in the morning. While we have homecoming, we have Astra, we have a groundbreaking for the Robert Augustus Wesley Park that will be constructed across the street from Pinteras. Again, it's a focus for our older children in the community, our seniors. So please put it on your calendar, come down and join us for the groundbreaking and honoring Mr. Wesley. She wants to know about the volunteer meeting, Leah. I'll, you want me to holler it out? June the 15th, 6.30 in the evening at 212 North Penn, which is the former J.C. Penney building. We'll see you there, Susie. Ellie, you want to tell us all about Relay for Life? Okay. Hi, I'm Ellie Culp, and I'm a cancer, or cancer survivor of 11 years. And uh, Yay. how many out here are cancer survivors? If you're not a cancer survivor, I'm sure you're involved with cancer in some way, somebody in your family, somebody, your dearest friend, and uh, everybody is involved with cancer in some way. I'm not a good speaker. <laughs> But uh, anyway, tonight at 6 o'clock is our Relay for Life at the Oval at the park. And uh, we, if you've never been there, you don't know what you're missing out on because it is a great event. We have five to 600 people, and we hope to have more. But anyway, we have, it's at the Oval at the park, and uh, we have at 6 o'clock is the uh, beginning of the survivor walk 
and we have like 12 to 15 motorcycles that starts the, around the track. And then we have a, a float for those seniors or whatever, can't walk and make it all the way around the track. We do have a float. Jim Dittmer uh, furnishes a float for us, for all the seniors or for whoever that cannot walk. And uh, after that, then all the survivors and the caregivers walk around the track. So the uh, Relay for Life is a yearly event. We have one every year. Uh, like I said, at 6 o'clock tonight, and uh, our theme for this year is Paint the World Purple with Hope. And we're going to have a lot of exciting things going on out there. We're going to have things for kids. We'll have things for adults. We'll have something for everybody. Uh, we have a big survivor tent. Uh, me and two other ladies have been in charge of it for 11 years since I am an 11-year survivor. And uh, we have free food for everybody. Everything is donated. Annie Mays is bringing sandwiches for me. And we have uh, Sonic bringing water. We have cookies from Laurel Street Bakery. We have all kinds of food. We have uh, T-shirts and uh, pins and everything for all survivors and the caregivers. So if you're a survivor, you come out and get your T-shirt. Uh, on the back of my shirt is sponsors. So that uh, every member that is a member of the team will be wearing one of these shirts. So as you walk around the track, you'll see all these advertisings. They start at 5000 So if you're a $5,000 donator, which a lot of you are, you start at the top, which is the big print. Mm -hmm. Then we have $1,000 sponsors, $500 sponsors, $250 sponsors, $100 sponsors, and sponsors in kind that give us different things like animes and different ones. And we have so many people that help out. It's just amazing all the people that do help us with the cancer thing. And uh, since you are all involved, come out and just see what we do. Uh, also, I wanted to let you know that we're going to have the commissioners involved tonight. And it would be worth it just coming out to see what's happening there. So... <laughs> I guarantee you, it'll be worth it. Okay, uh, we're going to go out. I'm going to go out there now. We set up all the tents. We have uh, the people at the jail that come over and set up all the tents and everything. And we have tables. We have like 50 tables that have to be out here. And chairs and everything has to be set up. The whole oval is a beautiful, beautiful place when we get it all fixed up. Uh, so any of you don't have anything to do today, come out and help us, because we have a lot to do. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, okay, we have a program going on all evening. We have something going on for kids. We have games. We have uh, music all evening. We have a stage. Jim Dittmer brings out a stage, and we have stuff going on all day. Um, bring your money. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds Our like a big night. You bet. Hey, our goal is uh, 30000 this year, and uh, we're a little over half there. We hope to raise the rest of it tonight. And, of course, a lot of it hadn't been turned in yet. But, uh, anyway, we're, our main thing is to raise money for cancer. And if you want to be a donor, and if you have extra money you'd like to get rid of, you just come to the American Cancer Society. Thank you. Thank I appreciate you, it very much. Thank you. And we appreciate all that you do to support the Relay for Life. It's a very worthwhile cause and affects a lot of people. So, okay, be there. Anybody else want to give a shout out, Tony? You going to talk concert? Okay. Um, for those of you who don't know, there is some information inside the city newsletters on the second page, but the city and the chamber are co-sponsoring a concert here in Memorial Hall. It's Shenandoah. Um, they will be here August 19th. Uh, tickets will be available online starting Monday, June 6th. Um, they start either at 19.50, 29.50, or 39.50. Um, we're really excited to have this concert here. We'd like to, again, bring tourism to Independence and also get some more concerts and more activities here in the hall. So I hope if you all are here or you like Shenandoah, you like country music, or you just like live music, we hope to see you all here. Awesome. We're excited about that. Get your tickets starting Monday.
Anybody else? Yeah. Oh, hands are up everywhere. Lana? And Tim, you want to make your way up here so you're ready to roll? Okay. And I'd like to invite you all to participate in the Independence Homecoming program that's happening um, next month. That'll be July 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Um, right back here on, it'll be family night uh, from 9 to 11.50 right here in the um, City Hall, uh, City Hall, uh, Memorial Hall. Also, um, earlier in the day, after First Friday, we'll be having registration so you can come and register for any of the events, get tickets and all that good stuff. On Saturday, there's a golf tournament that's going to be over in Sycamore. Um, there will also be registration back here again. And then there will be a school tour. Uh, there will be funny games out at the Ash Youth Center. Uh, the banquet will be Saturday night right back here at the Civic Center. And then, of course, as you heard um, Leah say, the Function Junction will be here Saturday night to put on a concert and party. And then also there, if you have any kind of talent and you'd like to participate, the Gospel Talent Review will be out at ICC West also Saturday night. And many of you know... Um, um, Perlene Barker, she will be um, putting that together. So if you know her, give her a call and she can get you on the list. Or, like I said, show up here during registration and get on the list and participate. And then Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning, he will have church service right here in the Civic Center. And then that will be at 11 a.m. And then there will be a family picnic at the 4-H building on Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock right there in the park. So we're right there in the middle of the Astro Festival, July 1st through the 3rd, right here in Independence. Like she said, we're bringing a whole lot of people into town. So come and see them. A lot of more people that you went to school with, grew up with. So come on out and have some fun. Thanks, Lana. You can pass that on to Tim. Just real briefly, uh, Chris didn't really touch on this, but out there, like we spent a lot of time camping out there, as Chris said. And the economic impact of that lake, and it's fun. I walk a lot in the morning with my dogs, and I talk to a lot of people. And they are just enthralled with independence. And we send them downtown to the businesses and things. And there's a huge um, following of people that are just passing through town. Like, my God, I had never known this town even existed. And one of the other things out there that a lot of you don't know, a lot of you do, best sunsets in the world. Uh, I've been to Jamaica. Everybody talks about Rick's sunset. It's supposed to be the best sunset in the world. We're sitting around going, this ain't nothing. <laughs> but, and one, one final point. Like I said, I was walking around out there the other day, and there's a young man there on a bicycle. And I started talking to him, and he had a funny accent. So anyway, I got to talk to him a little bit more. He was from Amsterdam, and he was bicycling from New Orleans to Portland, Oregon. And uh, we got talking. He said, you know, the people in New Orleans is those are not what I think about Americans. So what do you mean? He said, well, they're all fat. <laughs> and he said, I've, I've come into this is what I think of when I think of America is Independence, Kansas. I mean, it was a fantastic compliment to our community. So get out to the lake, though. Go out there in the evening sometime. There's some nice picnic tables. Sit there and watch the sunset. You'll be enthralled. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Thank Janice wants to. We'll pass that on. Thank you. Janice? Independence Family Medicine, owned by Wilson Medical Center, would like to invite everybody to come out and celebrate with Wilson Medical Center in Yodashe tomorrow evening at three or tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock, three fifteen. We start a commemorative ceremony for our hundred year celebration, and also um, we will also have lots of entertainment in the park. We're going to have a, a hundred balloons that we're going to release as a kind of a commemorative of our hundred years. Also, um, we have commemorative gifts. We have things for everybody in, in um, the family. So come out and enjoy um, your very own independence. Lily Taylor will be performing. We have Terry Peck that will be performing. We have Haywire that will be um, performing, as well as Thea Rose's uh, Bridge Band. Those will be all the concerts, music in the park. We have inflatables that will be um, for the kids. And if you've got really young toddlers, we even have an inflatable where the parents can go in with them. Um, we'll have a dunk tank, and I actually have my come, come dunk the CEO. Um, I got Dennis. He said he would be on it, so if you want to dunk a CEO, come and dunk uh, Dennis. He'll be there. Uh, we'll have free food, free drinks, snow cones, popcorn in the park, so we'd love for you to come face painting. Um, Harky the Clown will be there with um, animal balloons for the kids and adults, young at heart. Um, everybody. So come enjoy a night. Bring your uh, lawn chairs, and we will have a tent for shades. So come enjoy the evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 
Well, again, this has been an amazing, amazingly packed uh, hour and a half. I thank you for your time. Um, I thank you for your interest in the community. I thank you for all of the um, extra shout outs that you provide at First Friday. And Independence is an amazing place to live. I think we can all attest to that. Montgomery County is a great place to live. And um, I look forward to seeing you all next month. So have a great weekend. Thank you for coming.